Hey guys, welcome to the review of The Real Housewives of Potomac. Woo. Can you guys believe that this season is over already? Like, I swear it just started. That's crazy to me, right? And did you guys see the trailer? What did you guys think? It was all right. It was all right. You know what I mean? Um, they did They did a good job hyping it up with the editing. Nicki Minaj, I mean, when I heard she was guest hosting, to be honest, I wasn't too excited about it. But after seeing the trailer, I'm a little bit more hyped. I am. And of course, all the ladies definitely look beautiful in motion, right? They do. I just, just one thing, like, why is it four parts? Why? Don't get me wrong, I... I enjoyed the season, I really did, but what happened that deserves four parts? Like, really, what happened? I, I'm not sure. And I guess they're trying to, well, they always try to stretch it out, and I guess they're going to make Nicki Minaj's appearance, like, one full part, right? And it's like, okay, I am interested to see that, because the rumor is that Nicki Minaj and Candace got into a little tiff. So... Yeah, okay, but it doesn't need to be four parts. I would rather we got another normal episode. Like, we definitely could have used another episode because I feel like there are storylines that weren't really tied up so well. Like, we could have got an expansion on that versus having another reunion part. Just my personal opinion. What do you guys think? Okay, let's get into the review. Um... Karen, Karen and Ray, they're having their vow renewal. They've been married for 25 years, <laughs> you know, which Karen, Karen is not going to let us forget, you know, and she's rubbing it in the face of Robin and Giselle, like, I got a man, I got a man, and good for you. You know, Ray is a little bit older. Ray is, I wouldn't say Ray is handsome, but you know what? Ray is cute. And he seems to have a great sense of humor. And I do like them together. So you know what? Clap, clap for Karen. Congratulations on 25 years. One thing, though, it's kind of it's kind of weird that their daughter is not coming to their vow renewal because she has a kidney stone, allegedly. I mean, I guess you can't cancel your renew a wedding last minute because you booked everything you can't just drop everything to go to your daughter's side to make sure she's okay I get that but uh, well I guess as a kidney stone it will pass right aren't those really painful prayers for for Raven okay let's just move on Ugh, that sucks um so Ashley and Michael and What's her name? Robin and Juan. They go for dinner. And I don't know. It's just maybe because it's like Michael never really shows up to the reunion. Well, he does, to be fair. But he didn't show up to the last reunion. And I think the one before that, right? Because he's always involved in some sort of scandal. And, you know, Juan, Juan is never there. Remember when Karen was like, is he coming? Is Juan coming? Or no, I think that was, is Jamal coming? But it applies to both of them. Let's just be real, right? Juan never comes to the reunion. So we have all this crap go down and we never really get any answers. Like, I want Andy to ask Michael or ask Juan, what the hell is going on? Like, are you guys having an affair? Like, I need to know this, right? It's, this has been an ongoing thing. And I don't know if Michael's sort of just playing it up. Like last episode when he kept going on about Juan, I don't know if he, you know, he's making a joke of it. It's kind of weird to me. And Robin, I mean, I feel like if I was Robin and I was like last season, right, when they had um, their engagement, right? If I was Robin, I would feel some sort of way about Michael, right? Because Michael was kind of like, oh, Juan will never propose to her. Yeah, right. That's not going to happen. Like, if I was Robin, I would be like, well, what do you mean, Michael? Like, what are you talking about? 
it's kind of weird because we, as the audience, we never really got that moment of confrontation between them. So it's kind of just up in the air. It's just like a weird energy. And I hope that this reunion, well, one, of course, didn't show up. I'm not sure if Michael did. I hope I hope they talk about it, you know? I hope Nicki Minaj asks the question, right? Like, what's going on with Michael and Juan? Because I really, really want to know. Moving on to Candace. Candace, she signed to a record label. Don't ask me what the record label is called, but she signed. And I'm, I'm happy for Candace. I do like Candace. She got on my nerves, you know, a couple of episodes. But for the most part, she's cute. <laughs> you know, I don't know. She's just bubbly and I'm rooting for her. Now, um, what's his name? Alex Salter TV. If you guys watched his interview with Chris Bassett, Chris Bassett said that he only he's only going to do five seasons or he only wanted him and Candace to do five seasons of Real Housewives of Potomac. And next season is going to be their fifth season. So that should technically be their last season. Um, I guess if Candace's career takes off, right, where, in which I see why not, right, because she is talented, so who knows, right, I'm, I'm rooting for her for sure, but I don't know, I don't see, unless her career really takes off where she can be known primarily as a singer, I don't really see her leaving Real Housewives of Potomac if she doesn't really she doesn't want to, right? Because being on a show like this is great publicity, it's great promotion. She can promote her project. So why would you leave that if you're not set up in the way that you want to be set up? So that would be interesting to see if she's around next season and kind of what happens after that. Moving on. <laughs> and congratulations, Candice. Congratulations. Oh, one thing. Dorothy, that red dress, oh my gosh, she looked absolutely gorgeous. Her body looked phenomenal in that red, red velvet dress. Beautiful. Okay, and, and Chris looked handsome as well. They all looked good. Kudos to them. Okay, let's get to the dirt now. Moving on. Robin and Juan. So Robin... You know, she's kind of been hinting at it, but she finally kind of like really confronted him saying that, listen, when we first had our two sons, they're 18 months apart. Oh, my gosh, I can I could not even imagine how difficult that must have been. Right. That not only are you like a first time mother, but then you have another kid like sort of back to back and they're all under two. Like, oh, my gosh. So Robin was saying that. You know, because Juan was in the MB NBA, he was doing his own thing. He wasn't really involved in the rearing of the children, right? Or the babies, more specifically. And it was hard on her. And I think Robin does have concern that, look, if I have this, if I have another baby, is it going to be a repeat of the past? Are you going to be involved? Are you going to change diapers? Are you going to wake up in the middle of the night? right and feed the baby or change the baby whatever the baby needs or is it just going to be all on me and I think that is a fair question and I think it's a necessary conversation to have but of course Juan he breaks down and he storms off and he says you're making me look like a dickhead well, I mean, she's not making you look like a dickhead. Maybe you were, keyword, were a dickhead. I mean, it is what it is. Those are your actions. Nobody is perfect. We all F up. But you have to take accountability. You have to, in Lisa Rinna's words, you have to own it. You did it. It is what it is. You can't go back. But at least if you acknowledge uh your shortcomings then you can do better for the future but if you're not even willing to go there then if i'm robin i wouldn't feel too comfortable with having another kid because robin i don't quite know how old she is but she has to be in her 40s at least if not approaching her mid 40s like yeah of course you know with modern day 
advances in medicine, she could definitely have a child, but she is getting older. And I think, I don't know, I just get the feeling that a large part of Robin's life so far has been revolved around raising her two sons and catering to Juan and, you know, surviving the issues that they had and it's like now she's in a point where she's starting to have an she's starting to have success she has her hats embellished whatever the hell it's called right and it seems to be doing really well so I don't really feel like to be honest it doesn't seem like Robin really wants to have a kid is it just me but of course because she's just so I don't know. I feel like a large part of her identity is wrapped up in Juan and pleasing him and making him happy. I think he wants a kid, right? He wants a baby girl to complete the set. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Let's just be real. Like, I don't feel like Robin is too enthusiastic about having a kid so she's thinking like I don't even really want this kid it's more of a want thing and the last thing I want is to give birth to this thing okay let me not be rude let me give birth to this beautiful baby girl and then I'm the one stuck raising okay <laughs> not stuck but you get what I mean like I'm the one st stuck with all the responsibilities and he can go off and do his own thing and his excuse could be well I have a full-time job I'm a coach and I'm busy and you are at home so you have to do it and da 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 right there's no sort of room for negotiation or conversation like look how Juan just ran out of there right and his thing was like well you you did stuff too you were not perfect and it's like okay that's fine right then have that conversation it goes both ways Robin can say maybe what you know maybe what Juan did you know, how he fell short, and Juan can have that same conversation back at Robin. You know, you don't have to run away. And so, like, he goes to his car, and then Robin chases after him, and she's kind of getting him to say, like, look, you're making this more of a big deal than it really is, right? Because he was. Like, listen, stereotypically, we know that the fathers are usually not so much of like involved in the child rearing you know especially back in the day well it's not that far back in the day but you know what I mean like stereotypically you know that's what happens so I don't think anyone is going to judge Juan so harshly especially if he was in the NBA I think people could understand like yeah that wasn't right that he did that but we can see how that would come about but he's just getting all defensive. It's I give him more of a side eye uh, for how he handled the situation, not so much for what he did. For what he did too, let's be real, but more so how he's handling the situation in the present. You know, like, uh, I'm rambling again, so let me just wrap it up, wrap it up. I don't know. I just feel like Robin is a beautiful lady. Juan is a handsome man. They look beautiful together. They really do. And it's like on the surface, you want them to work. But I just feel like they want different things. You know? Like, and, and one more thing I want to say is like, you don't want Robin to talk about your dirt. But you have no problem airing Robin out saying like, oh, you don't get up to 2 p.m. and you don't wake up the kids and da 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 da. So it's like you can make her look bad, but she says one thing about you and you freak out and you can't handle it. I don't like one. I'm sorry. I don't. But listen, I wish them the well either way. You know, I don't wish any couple to break up. So moving forward to Kellens and Lehulov and their vow renewal. Um, despite the shade and the stairs, <laughs> okay, 
it was a beautiful, it was a beautiful vow renewal. It was. And Karen looked absolutely stunning. I think this is the best I've seen her look. It's definitely up there. And Karen has been looking real good lately. So that's, that's been saying, that's saying a lot, right? Um, yeah, all the ladies looked good. Like Ascala, Ascala. Listen, she may have not brought much in terms of drama, but she definitely brought the fashion. So I want to see more of her, even if it's just to look at her, because she's absolutely stunning and she knows how to dress. And the Real Housewives of Potomac, they need a little bit of help, right? But of course, Candace and Wendy have been holding it down as well. Like, Wendy looked absolutely gorgeous, right? But I don't know. I, I wouldn't wear a dress that I couldn't even sit I couldn't even sit in. I mean, like, you're going to a wedding. You're probably going to dance. You're probably going to do a lot of sitting. So you're going to need to be able to sit. But other than that, kudos to the ladies. Now let's get into the mess. Michael and Chris. I don't... I don't know why Michael is so upset, to be honest with you. Right? Like... I guess it's kind of maybe an unrealistic expectations for to expect the husbands to sort of be kind of like distant from the drama that goes on between their wives. You know what I mean? But like, that's just how it goes. If you're a part of this show, you kind of have to accept that the ladies are going to have their back and forth. Like you can't get personally involved in every single thing. But at the same time, okay, I don't know. It goes both ways to me. Like, Ashley and Candace have said low-down, dirty things to both of them. Now, uh, oh, I like Candace, but this is when I'm going to have to be real. I think Candace sort of takes the edge over Ashley in terms of low-down, dirty things. And I do think maybe some of the stuff that Candace has said has been not just about Ashley, but has been about Michael as well. So I, I don't think it's just about his wife. I think he's personally offended by what she said. Like one of the comments that Candace made was basically calling Michael a slave master. So I can understand where he would feel some type of way towards her. But... I just think it's a great rule of thumb for the husbands not to really get too much involved with the drama with the wives. They should just be far removed. Like, I like them kind of just hanging out with each other and having a good laugh and that be that. I don't want to see them fighting with the other women and all that, you know, like, just stay back. And maybe they need to... Maybe the wives, they need to come together and say that the husbands are off limits. Like, don't refer to the husband in any way so that we can keep that sort of distance, right? At the same time, it's like Michael, however, did a lot of dirty crap that has come to light. You know, he's cheated on Ashley multiple times. He has sexually assaulted crew members. I mean... If he didn't do crap, then he wouldn't be subject of conversation, right? No one would have any comments to make. So it, he put himself in that situation, just like Juan, who's like, you're making me look like a dickhead. Well, if you didn't do the dickhead thing, you wouldn't look like a dickhead, right? So I don't think the other ladies i don't think candace is coming from coming for him for no reason there are reasons behind it and i think michael especially the way michael conducted himself last season with that proposal party you would think he would have a little bit of shame like he got sloppy drunk he was a mess right and if you are going in someone's face saying hey you got to control your wife and someone says, get out of my face. And you say, I don't know what he said. Like he swore at them. It's like, listen, listen. I mean, you're not innocent in that. And, and I'm glad that Robin spoke up in that moment when um, Michael and Chris were having their back and forth. Like, 
you're not innocent in this situation. You contributed to that moment. And Chris was trying to be the better man by saying, look, I know we've had our moment, but that was then. This is now. I don't have any issue with you. Let's just move forward. And instead of Michael humbly accepting that because Michael made an ass out of himself, he has to go, well, if you're going to apologize, then apologize like a man. Like, why would Chris need to apologize to you? Right. If anything, from my perspective, Michael was in the wrong in that situation. And if I'm going to be generous, I can say, OK, I can see how maybe Chris was a little hyped up and I can see how Michael was sloppy drunk. At the very least, it's a wash. But if I'm going to be honest, I think Michael was at fault for that confrontation. Like if anything, Michael should be apologizing, you know, and so Chris is just saying, let's be cool. But then he has, you owe me an apology. And in that moment, I totally understand Candace being like, the white privilege is absolutely ridiculous. Like, it is. It is, right? Now, Candace saying that, did it help in the moment, right? Did it help to patch things up and get to a better place? No, it didn't help the situation, but, you know, that's Candace. She's going to tell it like it is, right? And I don't think she told any lies, really and truly. And, of course, Michael didn't like that, but Candace is right. Candace is right. Like, not not only is he a white guy, but he's a white guy that, I mean, I don't know his net worth, but he seems to be pretty wealthy, right? So I can understand if, and he's in his, what, 60s? So if you've been wealthy most majority of your life at this point, you're used to getting your way. You're used to people kissing your ass, right? And I feel like all of the, I don't want to say all of the cast and the husbands, they do seem to be kissing his ass. Like, I need to do my research about Michael. Like, is he really that rich? How much money does he have? Like, he must have status within the community, right? So he's used to people kissing his ass, I guess. So, like I said, Candace wasn't wrong. I mean, I'm rambling. Juan. Juan is, like, you know, just when you think it's one-sided, right? This one-sided romance between Juan and Michael. You know, I used to think it was coming more from Michael, but, like, Juan is definitely leading into it. They definitely have a bromance. And I don't know if they're just playing around for the cameras. Like, okay, everyone thinks that we're an item, so let's just have fun. You know, Juan was like, oh, you can give me a hug. Oh, my gosh. And it's so funny when um, Ashley meets Michael right uh, meets Michael outside. You know, he's like, oh, yeah, you look good. You look good. You know, very, very dainty. They were dancing at the party, and that kiss was like, it was like a peck. But when he sees Juan, he's like, oh, wow, you look so handsome. Oh, I want to look like you. Like, the level of enthusiasm that Michael has for Juan does not match the level of enthusiasm that he has for Ashley. Like, very weird. And Juan definitely has more enthusiasm for Michael than he... As for Robin, and, and like, I don't know, there was a moment when they were talking about wearing rings and Robin was like, you never wore a ring. And he was like, don't do that. You know, under his breath, don't do that. Don't do that. He, like, I know, I guess earlier seasons, he got a lot of flack, right? He got a lot of flack. I guess a lot of people were on him because he was allegedly cheating and all that jazz. So I think he's super sensitive now about his image. But like on a human level, I totally understand like uh, you don't want to look bad in front of millions of people. But at the end of the day, I mean, this is the sixth season. You should be somewhat used to it by now. You are on camera. I mean, you can't be so uptight. You can't be so like, never make me look like, never make me look like a dickhead. I always have to look great. I always like, you can't control that. That's too much. And you end up looking like a dickhead trying to avoid looking like a dickhead, right? In that moment when Robin was like, you never wore your wedding ring. 
he could have just said, oh, yeah, you know, I played basketball and da, 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 you know, like just explain it. Right. But him getting upset about it, it just makes it worse. It draws attention to that moment. Anyways, so after, you know, Chris and Michael, they I don't know if they made up. There was nothing really to make up. I, I don't think they like each other. I don't think they're going to be friends, but at least they can be cordial, right? Because, I mean, at this point, they're colleagues, so they don't really have a choice. Um, later, Chris talks to Candace on camera and was like, look, you shouldn't have said that in the moment because you just made the situation worse. And Candace was like, well, I'm telling the effing truth here. So what it is, what it is. I wasn't lying. Chris, I mean, this is the theme. I don't get why Chris wants to get along with everybody so bad. Like, so desperately so. And I get it to a certain extent. You want to get along with everybody. But you should have your wife's side first. That's the first person that you should have, like, you should have Candace's back first. And then, you know, try to make nice with everybody if possible. But when you try to, when you contradict her and try to lecture her and try to teach her, especially on camera, it just, it looks bad and you make her look bad, you know? And Candace already has this reputation of going off at the mouth and, you know crossing the line right she already has this reputation so for you to check her on camera is like you're further adding to that narrative and that's your wife why would you do that clearly she's bothered by that why you know and the reason why she said that was because she was standing up for you in a sense so she's standing up for you she's saying hey that's not right and you're getting mad at her like that's ridiculous but then Chris will sit there and he will allow Michael right to make a big deal and be disrespectful to him but then Candace can't I don't know it's just weird to me I do like like I watched the interview Chris seems like a nice guy I do like Candace and I do like them together but I don't like the way that they argue. I don't. I think it's very disrespectful, the both of them. I think that, I don't know. I don't know. Like, and I'm rambling. Ah! <laughs> I'll just end it there. Like, I, I just don't like the way that they engage when they have conflict. It's, uh, they need to work on that. Anywho, I mean, this was this was a good finale episode. It was. And I'm looking, I look forward to the reunion, okay? Okay. That's everything, guys. See ya.